Check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts. Arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. D. Brief. Hello and welcome to The Debrief, Detroit's podcast for concerts, comedy, plays, food, drink, and more. It is Wednesday, August 7th, 2019, and I'm your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. All right, let's talk about uh, what's happening on the show today. We have Aaron Foley, the chief storyteller of Detroit, at least for another month or so. He's going to come on and we're going to talk to him, get his take on the debates that happened last perfect, week. Perfect, perfect. I'm going to tell you about Stroh's and their new beer that's coming out in this month. Uh, also, it Idris Elba, the actor, uh, Stringer Bell, if you ever watched The Wire, and shame on you if you haven't. He said something very nice about Detroit. We'll tell you what it is. And this Thursday, instead of our usual Friday, we have an interview coming out uh, this week with Michael Smith of the Detroit Improv Fest. want you to know that we have Michigan Podcast Productions. If you have been thinking about launching a podcast uh, and you want to know more, you can go to michiganpodcastproductions.com. We can help you out. Let's bring on today's guest co-host. The D. Coming back for day number two, we have the president and one of the founders of the Royal Star Film Festival, which takes place in Royal Oak, September 6th through the 15th. He is also the president of the Royal Star Arts Institute, uh, Luke Castle. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, guys. Yes, hello. Uh, that's great. Let's talk a little bit about this film festival and some of the films that are going to be there. These There's are... movies there. Movies? movies. Yeah, films. It... I don't know. Can I, can I call them movies? Is there a difference? What's I don't the... know. <laughs> some people get prickly about it. Yeah, I think film sounds a little more intellectual. Mm, so then we have films. Um, yeah, we have we have a bunch of them. Short films, long films, documentaries for the really intelligent people. I mean, we have it all. And, it's, okay. and there's some really good stuff this year. And I'm really really excited about it um how do you pick like what how, what's the process so we get about 60 darts and <laughs> no, yep, <laughs> just throw uh, yep. so there's this how we do it is, is i feel unique versus other film festivals where we invite anybody in the community so you don't have to be a filmmaker or an actress or any you could be the guy that flips burgers at mcdonald's or you could work in an office and if you want to be part of the selection process um, we invite you out. We we I, as of right now, we still screen some of the films at Imagine. Okay. We just meet you to make sure that you know you're not nuts. Um, <laughs> so podcast co-host is yeah, legit, totally anyway. legit, totally oh. legit. Like, come on out. I'm need um, to do this. And then well, the, the other reason is we want to make sure we we're talking to you. So you're not one of the films in the festival. Sure, uh, sure, so sure, that's, sure. that's really why we want to meet you in person to ask those questions. Hey, why um, do you get plants? Do you get people trying to sneak in? Rings? Well, I don't think we get plants. I think people get really excited about all, you know, they make films and they also want to help pick mm. them. I don't think there's any kind of uh, bad, uh, not bad intentions. Okay. But then we have to be like, well, if your film's going to be in. Conflict right. of interest. Yeah, there's a conflict yeah. of interest just to keep the integrity up there. Um and then you could come in and we sort of teach you how we're going to rate the film and, you know, hmm. you can watch them at home after that or you can keep coming out on the weekend. Yeah, it's a Monday nights usually. But um, you keep coming out on the Monday nights that we have them or you can watch them at home after that first orientation, we call it. Very cool. Um, that's just cool. You can watch them on your big screen. You can watch them on your phone. You can watch them wherever. It's, it, we live in the future, guys. And awesome. how many are under consideration, say, that would then get? How many get submitted a yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we've gotten as much as 350, I think, oh. is the numbers. And we have to, like, boil that down to – wait, this year, what was it? I think it's 89, 89 films. Mm -hmm. So 89 films we have it down to this year. Um, and that's a combination of shorts and um, features um, and also – uh, what's it called? Narratives and documentaries. Yes. When you're putting together a film festival, do you do things to differentiate it from other film festivals that are in the area? Like, how does that work? Mm -hmm. When I'm putting together, well, yes, I guess. Um, the first, there's certain things that I like to hit as, as being a film festival. Since year one, we've always been a film market, which separates us a lot from the other film festivals in the area. What does that mean? A film it market? means people are actually there to buy a film. Oh. So that's how Kevin Smith got oh. his first film bought. He got it bought, he had it bought at Sundance. Yep. Sundance is a market. Cannes is yeah, a market. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um mm -hmm. Uh, South by Southwest is a market, and that's something I pushed for our first year. And I went out to LA to find people who would come in, which were interested, and that's unheard of because it's just like, who are you? This is your first year? What are you doing? But um, mm -hmm. I knew people out in LA, and 
they said, yeah, we'll come in. And every year we've had at least one film be bought. Wow. From Which our Hustle. hands are off that. Yeah, they just, yeah. they come in they're like, yeah, we want that. And they get it bought. So um, cool. we've always wanted to make it a market. Part of the Royal Star Arts Institute and the film festival is uh, sustainable film meaning that this is an economy, this is a job. So mm -hmm. the only way we can do that is an exchange of goods and services, right? Um, so that's part of the equation is selling your film so we can go and make more films. If it just goes to festival and it, it doesn't really go anywhere after that, you're not really building the economy. So right. um, it's something yeah. I wanna do so we can continue to create jobs moving forward which is especially important in michigan absolutely after the film incentives went absolutely away and, we're yeah. working on it I'm, yeah. I'm working on it so where do people go if they want to find out more about the film festival uh they go to royal star with two rs.org so it's royal s-t-a-r-r.org you can also find us on facebook instagram and twitter we're really active on instagram and facebook facebook being the most we have all mm -hmm. kinds of events events that happen throughout the year so yeah cool well hang out and have a good time this is the D. Hi, right, Becky. Let's talk about food and drink. What's happening? Yeah. So Stroh's has a new beer coming out. It's actually going to be released on August 12th. And I had a Stroh's over the weekend. And uh, so I was interested in this that I didn't realize they've already created four new Stroh's beers here in the last few years. So I've never had a Stroh's. Never. Uh, and I, not to my knowledge. Okay. Not unless, yeah, there's different types. Uh, yeah. But, but Stroh's has history here. Exactly. So Stroh's was founded in Detroit in 1850. Wow. Uh, but in 1999, Pabst bought it, moved it to L.A., didn't have you know the Detroit uh, connection anymore. But in 2016, Stroh's came back to the D. So See, it's cool. Everybody's coming back. Everybody to the, wants to be back in the action. So yeah. So how it works is Corktown has a place called Brew Detroit. It's a brewing facility. So that's where these beers are being made. And the newest one, which like I said, is the fourth of these new Stroh's series is named the Detroit Lager. It's 4.6 ABV. Uh, it's highlighted with corn grits and caramel malts. And apparently the, um, descriptors are that it's refreshingly balanced with a piercingly crisp finish. So I do wonder this. Do you think that the reason they came back here is an economic reason? Do you think it's a, a marketing reason? Like kind of like Shinola? Like it's just cool to that's be cool from to Detroit? Be, yeah. Who wants to be the LA beer? Really? Right. I right. mean, what do you think that's all about? I think it's a combo. Yeah. A fact that uh, you could do business here again and make is, it profitable. Is it cooler to be a beer from Detroit than a beer from LA? Well, I'm sort of biased. Yeah, so, for sure. I'd I say mean, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's it's cooler for everything. <laughs> right. From Detroit is cooler. Exactly. And capitalizing on the history. I mean, that's where it started. And even the the head brewer at Brew Detroit, he started at the original Stroh's Brew House on Gratiot in the 70s. Oh, wow. Like, that's where he started his brewing career. So it's all kind of come full circle. The other kind of cool. Um, you know, local connection is that there's a local artist, Jesse Castle, designed the label. He's a guy that's been in murals in the market and did all their marketing stuff. And it's got this oxblood uh, color gold um, can, which is a tribute to the Detroit City FC. So the soccer club and Stroh's is a sponsor of that. So it's just got all these cool uh, local references and ties. So I like that they're coming back. I like, I like companies coming back. I mean, me too. Let's support these things. This is great. And with all the sort of generic things out there, you know, this stuff has real identity yeah. that people can connect to. So, so Idris Alva uh, was on this crazy show. I'd never heard of this show before. So I'm a fan. Do you know who he is? Idris Elba? I just looked him up. Oh, yes. you did, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. I think he's another one of those. If you look him up, you'll you recognize. Well, so, so Stringer Bell from The Wire, and The Wire is the greatest television show ever made in the history of television. <laughs> I've heard this. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, yes, uh, Game of Thrones was in the running till that last season. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I've heard uh, this also. <laughs> uh, but he's also been in other things. He's the guy that they keep uh, name checking as a possible uh, new James Bond. Except mm -hmm. there's uh, you know horrible, awful people who think that James Bond can't be black. Otherwise, it well, would be I him. Could be a woman now. Right. Right. They. You know. Which, you know, yes. We'll see how that happens. But, but yeah. uh, I, I look, I don't say that there's a lot of men out there that are sexy. Oh, he's totally. I get it. He's yeah. an attractive I, human being. So you understand. Get yeah. it. <laughs> he's a um, very lovely person. Yes. So, so, yeah. So I'm a fan. So what did he say? I am a fan as well. L Luther, the, the UK series. Oh. <laughs> so, anyway, there's this show called Hot Ones. So, huh. Okay, he's on that. You know, I, I know <laughs> Let's not go overboard. 
<laughs> it's a chicken one. No, but yeah, it's okay. a chicken. It, it refers to chicken wings. So it's called the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. So the host, Sean Evans, he interviews guests while they each eat increasingly spicier chicken wings. Okay. It's a great show. And, yeah. So this season, this current season, Hellfire Detroit hot sauce made right here in the city is featured in it. So it kind of falls in the middle of the range of the spiciness. So it's right about that point where people are starting to sweat a little bit like, oh, these are getting spicy, you know. So Idris was on it and he's looking at the Hellfire hot sauce like he was skeptical. He's like, taste no evil. Who would put that on a label? Because that's what it says right on there. But he uh, became a fan. He tried it and he's like, this is by far my favorite that I've had. It's hot. It's great. Love it. I would milk that for all it's worth if I were that hot sauce. Company. I know. How cool. Like, have you, have you had it? Are you a hot sauce person? Oh, my God. No, I'm such a wimp with the hot stuff. Such a wimp. I wish I did, but it ruins food for me. So, but my son likes it a lot. He puts hot sauce on everything. What and about I you, got Luke, him you? This. No, I used, yeah, I used to be that person. And now I'm just like, no, it's, can't do it. It's Getting not the old. going in that's a problem for oh, me. Oh, d- stop. <laughs> I, I, okay, but I'm going to talk about something else. Right. <laughs> um, now open uh, Asian corned beef on Woodward. It's right there between seven and eight mile. This is the seventh location. I was so excited about this. Some people still don't know about it. I was driving down Woodward with my girlfriend. We were out on Friday night, and I decided to take Woodward all the way home. And she's like, Asian corned beef? What the heck is that? I'm like, that is a Detroit thing. It's so it's such basically a thing. corned I beef. I haven't had it yet. I have not Corned done beef it. rolled up in an egg roll. It's not yeah. personally my thing, but it's, yeah, it's obviously very successful. Seven locations. They're three bucks, you know? So it's like, cool. they're They're huge, too. Yeah, they're big. They're like these, they're, they're mutants. So you've done this a lot. It, it's, here's the thing. So places like this, I feel like it's about the experience mm-hmm. over mm. the food. The food is the food. There's a lot of people yeah. that can do this. Uh, I feel like they do it the best. There's another place like this that does. There's a guy that does sandwiches in Oak Park, and it's a oh, sam- yeah, it it's is. a sandwich. Yeah, like it's it's a sandwich, but with a smile and a love and a. Show but it's about kissed. the experience yeah. of going, and this is about the experience, and it, it's it's a true Detroit experience. I used to live right here off a of seven mile on Woodward. And I just moved away from there like two months ago. Oh, darn. You could have watched And they there? started to build this. And I was so excited. And then I found out I had to move. <laughs> oh, darn. Because yeah, we used to, to go down downhouse. on seven. It used to be seven mile. And I forget if what it was. you waited too much, your property value would have gone through the roof. Oh, yeah. there'd be <laughs> Back in the day, federal. they had yeah. an armed guard out there because it was on a really sketchy corner, like in the middle of not the best yeah. area. Because I didn't live in the best area. I loved it, though. It's my home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I loved going. It was always like... Like a, a do or dare kind of thing at two in the morning. Like, are you going to go? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go. It's, I need it. It's corned beef that's fried. <laughs> Does it look like I'm a guy that doesn't need that? If, if, if I die for a corned beef egg roll. It's so it's worth it. It's worth. They have a Philly steak one. I mean, I'm not even kidding. You got to go try it right, out. I'm going to go try it. You are. I, I know you I are. We stumbled this on is, it on accident. and This needs to go on one of my popsicle sticks. It needs to go on one of my popsicle sticks. Stick it I'll in the jar. I'll go with you, man. Just call me up. We, I, we, ha- go. we have this challenge, the popsicle stick challenge. We are asking people when they hear of something on the show that they want to do that they haven't done yet, write it on a popsicle stick, stick it in a jar. Next time you've got a, a night where you're like, I just need something to do. What do I, I, I do? That. You draw a stick, you go. And you go. And then you tag us and you tell us about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sounds great. Yep. But I'll be your liaison. I'll take you down there. Yeah. So they know me by the name. Ropes. I was oh. a regular. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. So another opening, Wahlburgers. So this is the, I think it's the fourth location now in Michigan. Um, the Wahlberg Brothers love uh, Michigan. So this is going in at the Woodward Corners in Royal Oak. That's a new development at Woodward and 13 Mile right next to the Beaumont Hospital there. So it's the first spot to open there. And pretty smart because just in time for the Dream Cruise coming up in a couple of weeks. So there's lots of decor in there with uh, pictures of, you know, Mark and Danny and, and lots of like Royal Oak stuff. I'm embarrassed to admit the first concert I ever went to was headlined uh, by Marky Mark. Mark and the Funky, funky bunch. bunch. Yeah. No shame in that game. D. Brief. Want more? Text the word Detroit, Detroit. <laughs> to the number 444-999. All right, Luke, every so often we have somebody call into the show who is an expert in something that Becky and I really are not. Uh, And we figured with the Democratic debates happening in the city last week, we needed to talk to somebody from City Hall. So we've got our friend Aaron Foley on the line. He is the chief storyteller uh, for the city of Detroit. And I always like to plug the fact that he wrote uh, one of my favorite books that I first read when I got here. Kind of your go-to manual. This was my go-to manual, How to Live in Detroit Without Being a Jackass. There's a new edition out. Uh, Aaron, welcome back to the show 
Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's start with the debates uh, that were happening last week. First of all, what did you think? How, what did it do for the city? Um, I think, you know, I think everyone was so focused on what the candidates were saying. People didn't really go into the, you know, I didn't see any big reports about, you know, like, you know, disgruntled diners in Macomb County or like, <laughs> you know, or like yeah. unhappy union auto workers or anything like that. I think everyone's just so focused on like the whole spectacle, of like 24 different candidates and, and, and whatnot. I will say like the Fox theater, the Fox theater looked really good. Everyone just kept tweeting about how amazing the debate stage looked like, but that was, that was it. There wasn't a lot of, you know, Detroit, you know, coverage, I guess, you know, I mean, Detroit was out there because of, um, you know, just because of where the debates were, but there were, I didn't really see a lot of like flyover, you know, everyone trying to decipher Detroit or anything like that. It was all just focused on, uh, the debate itself. Let me ask, what is the city's role in an event like that? Like, what are you guys doing there in city hall? Um, so immediately, whether it's a, a presidential debate or whatever, um, we deploy uh, more police, um, especially in a situation where you've got all, like all these high profile uh, people. You know, there, there, there is a security threat. Sure. Um, um, Homeland security is involved. Um, and I, I think uh, we also talk with, uh, you know, department, you know, our department of public works as far as, um, you know, crowd control and stuff like that. And, 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 in in the event that a street has to be shut down you know how do we alert people around in this case because there's not a lot of residential around the past year there's a couple you know there's apartment buildings but i think back to when aretha franklin's funeral happened and it happened the you know one of the church services in the neighborhood a lot of the city departments had to inform the residents uh who were living in the houses like hey like you may not be able to back out your driveway between the hours of you know 8 a.m and, and whatever uh, because because a lot of the streets are going to be shut down for like the hearses and stuff like that. Um, so we're, we're kind of like a support arm, but because, um, you know, auto show, this happens, um, you know, big events like the D drop, uh, anything that will draw a huge crowd, presidential or not, um, can pose a security risk because like we've seen in other cities, a marathon, uh, mm -hmm. literally, literally everything that happened this weekend, uh, get a big crowd of people together, and that that is, you know, unfortunately, grounds for some sort of an attack. So, right. Uh, speaking of things stopping down, I heard a rumor that uh, Biden stopped the queue line because he was having a Coney Island stop with your boss. Yeah, so <laughs> he needed the Coney's. I actually had no idea about that until I read it, just like everyone else. <laughs> oh, see, we thought you have the inside Yeah, we, there should be a memo or something. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing about any elected position, whether it's Detroit or, or you know, Podunk Township out in Podunk County, um, you have to take the day off pretty much. You know, use it as a vacation day, um, if, you know, to, to lend your support to a candidate, right? So... Um, so uh, that's probably why a lot of people didn't know is because I think technically the mayor had the day off. However, I will give Joe Biden credit. So many people, every, everybody come like Julian Castro and pretty sure some other candidates probably thought about it too, but everybody visits Detroit and goes to American and Lafayette. It's always those two. Mm -hmm. My personal beef is, you know, there's so many other different kinds of Coney Islands in the city um some that may be better than american and lafayette why not check out those two so for, detroit one yeah yeah so why not detroit one which is like i like going you know it's a great breakfast spot it's also open Amazing. uh super late so a lot of people go there like after you know hanging out in a nightclub or something like that which i've done several times um, so. <laughs> so here's a question for you uh and you're the guy who would know you know when we get through the primary and we're finally down to two candidates running for president uh, where should they be doing their photo ops in mm -hmm. the detroit area like where would you recommend yeah i would say find a place that don't tell anybody that you're going there right yeah like you know, everybody, every, I like Cuzzle's Chicken and Waffles. They're a great business on Livernois. But, you know, Cory Booker was there two years ago. Uh, 
couple of other people like, you know, that's become like the campaign stop if you're in Detroit is is stopping by uh, Cuzzle's Chicken and Waffles. Why not a place, you know, like uh, Faustina's Chicken and Waffles, which is on uh, Six Mile in Wyoming near Mary Grove College? You know, it's a place in the neighborhood. It's kind of off the beaten path, relatively speaking. Um, and but it's a place that people at least expect. I right. think that's one. I think that's one thing Detroiters like is like, like people did not expect Joe Biden to go to Detroit. One, you always go to America and Lafayette. Go to the places now that like you at least suspect. So you know, going to Southwest Detroit and, and talking with, um, you know, some of the the people who have a legitimate fear of what's happening in this country because you do have a very large immigrant population uh, down in Southwest Detroit, hanging out in Bangletown hanging out like far on the west side like around rouge park and things like that that's where i want to see people go and like that's you know we all know what cuzzles looks like right now we all right. know we all know the exterior of american and lafayette but you know that's that's still you know there's so many other places in detroit where i think you know i think it would catch a lot of people off guard if people are just like oh my gosh he went to he went to capers on on <laughs> on, on seven mile and Gratiot, or he went to to, to floods or he went to you know savannah blue somewhere like that so i would love to see him go to el rey's down in mexican town oh yeah. yeah yeah it's one of my favorite places well i think it shows just that you've done research even like you just didn't take the lazy way out like you google detroit and you didn't go to the top five things that come up like you actually trying to get at some issues and some neighborhoods so it says a lot about the person that they would do that research yeah, and I and I know and I know how photo ops work, right? You want like the newest place, the place where you can get like some great lighting, and you can see a lot of you know, you know, backsplash and everything's all done up and stuff like that. Because um, I, <clears throat> I, I probably I'm probably thinking that like a lot of people don't also want to depict, you know, a negative view of Detroit, right? Blight but, or whatever, yeah. Yeah, but like at the same time, so many places that we love in Detroit aren't new. You know, there are a lot of the old places that are very well worn and, you know, like the, you know, the chairs aren't new, the tables aren't new, but like Mm -hmm. the food is good. You know, the people who make the food are clean. So it's not like it's a health violation or anything like that. Um, But, you know, they've been they've been these neighborhood staples for many, many years. Um, They're not flashy at all, but there's a reason why they're still here. It's because people love them regardless. Mm -hmm. Right. So did you get to rub elbows with any of the, you know, CNN elite while they were in town? I tried to stay as far away personally. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Woodward's closed. I'm not going over there. You did, right, Becky? Not me personally, but uh, my boss of uh, the Feet on the Street Tour Company. Yeah, she uh, she hooked up with uh, Anderson Cooper in Capitol Park. Nice. And, yeah. Is she going to help him drop the ball this year? At Hopefully, Eve, yeah. Right? They're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aaron, let's talk about what's next for you, because you've announced that you are leaving that position as chief storyteller uh, for the city of Detroit. What what are you up to? Yeah. So in four weeks, I will be departing to do a year long fellowship, a journalism fellowship at uh, Stanford University. And every year um, they welcome a new class of fellows uh, to study journalism. I mean, that's my background anyway, but to study innovation in journalism. And, and what new problems can be solved, you know, with this kind of like tiny cohort of people to try to move the industry forward? Because there's a lot of issues in journalism ranging from how we deliver news to how we read news, all of that, you know, living in the fake news era, all of that, um, that, you know, we, how do you use the resources that are there at the university and what's around you in Silicon Valley to solve these problems? And how I ended up here, I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect for you though so you- it, yeah it, it's it, it's working i guess um i'm you know i'm happy to have it but i'm also it's a little bit bittersweet because sure um uh, yeah i i do i do truly enjoy uh what i do with the city of detroit i love my team i love the work that we do um i've enjoyed you know my time with the mayor fortunately the mayor did say i could come back uh to the city Maybe not in the role that I'm leaving because mm-hmm. it's going to get filled. But, um, you know, I, I think it speaks to, you know, like how how much I, I, I value this this role that I have that, you know, I'm, I'm very sad to be leaving. it. Wow. So do we know yet who's going to take over as chief storyteller? 
No, not yet, because we're literally, I literally interviewed one candidate today. So oh, okay. <laughs> ah. yeah. Can I, can I apply to be a storyteller? Yeah, how, how do you apply? Would, yeah, how do I do this? <laughs> Send, me, send the resume because it's, it's still very much up in the we'll, air we'll right now. We'll connect you. Yeah. You go to monster.com. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, we I, know a guy. Are you, are you, <laughs> you going to write a book, How to Live in Palo Alto Without Being a Jackass? Yes. I am going to tell everyone moving to Silicon Valley right now because it's the hot place to move. Right. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you – I grew up in Silicon Valley. There is no way to live in Silicon Valley no. without being a jackass. No, like, not really. As soon as you yeah. move there – you're a jackass. It just, it just is what it is. So, so 13 years ago, I was a intern at a newspaper at the San Jose Mercury News. That's my hometown and, newspaper. And I was renting. I, you know, I, I like working there. And this is right before everything changed. I was renting an apartment in San Jose near downtown San Jose for $700 a month. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so cuz I was I was going through some old emails and I found like all this correspondence from back then and stumbled across how much it cost to rent there and it was like $700 a month, which to me was still kind of expensive cuz I was still a college student. Sure. Compared to now when I uh. was apartment out there. Oh my gosh. Well, oh they, my they have the sharks it's, now, so it's a big difference. <laughs> it's <laughs> nuts. <laughs> So, wow. well, look, best of luck to you. We've loved having you on the show. Yeah, by the way. yeah, and we can't wait. So, and uh, I can't wait for you to meet my sister in Menlo Park and uh, and catch up with you that way too. And you'll have to keep in touch. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, you know, I'm not falling off the face of the earth. No, guess, so. no. <laughs> but yeah, no, no. I, I, I am going to miss Detroit while I'm gone. Uh, but it will. I'm, Guess I'll be coming back. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. So, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. It's all about the journey. Yeah. Well, Aaron Foley, chief storyteller for the city of Detroit. And like I said, go get the new version of How to Live in Detroit Without Being a Jackass. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, thanks for everything. And, you know, best of luck to you. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. This is the D. Detroit. This is the D. Breathe. There it is, show number two. Thank you so much for yeah, coming back, Luke. This so yeah, fun. this is so much fun. Uh, look, we mention a lot on this show. If you would like us to email you links to everything that we talk about, all you have to do is go to our website, thedebriefdetroit.com. While you're there, sign up for the email list. We'll send you links every week. Or you can just text the word Detroit to 444-999. All right, Luke, one last thing you got to do before we get out of here. You ready? I hope so. Here we go. We're going to ask you for a series of rapid-fire recommendations. Just tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, starting with this, what is your favorite place to see a concert in Detroit? Um, back in the day, it would have been Shane Park. I don't know what they call it now. Aretha they, Franklin. Uh, is that what they, yeah, okay. <laughs> so back in the day, it was Shane Park. If you don't know what the name of anything is now, Aretha, Aretha Franklin, Franklin is, is probably a pretty good right. guess. Yeah. I'm going to answer that for the rest of these questions. Who'd you see there? <laughs> I don't Aretha remember. Franklin. It was we were doing a documentary, and I remember Aretha Franklin. <laughs> we saw Aretha Franklin. That's who who we saw. Just go with You're that. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember though. I I remember going there. I don't remember much about it. <laughs> okay. I understand. I'm not gonna go into it. Yeah, yeah. We get the picture. Um, favorite locally made TV commercial? Do you have one? Fago commercials. Okay. I want to make the Fago commercials. I've been asking Fago if I can make because you know I'm a filmmaker. Right. Yes. I love com- I love commercials. It, see, this is where I light up. Uh, could, yeah, I know you got to say it. I want. That's one of my dreams is to make the Fago commercials one day. What? And I've actually talked to them. I'm just like, look, just let me do it. I'm your biggest fan. I, I'm I'm such a huge Fago fan. I don't even. I yeah. Nice. I can't. Do you have I, a favorite flavor? Or no? Rock and Ryan Red Pop. It's actually my Wi-Fi password. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> not <now> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Do you have a favorite film set in Detroit? I really like The Irishman. It was filmed a while ago, probably about 10, 10 years ago. Now. I don't know this one. This is new. This is not come it, up but before. I haven't seen it. What's yeah, a... it's, it's really good. Uh, it's it was done for Stars, I believe the okay. the TV station. I love The Irishman. Wow. I probably want that and the robot one. I forgot the robot. Robocop. One was. Robocop. No, no. no. Oh. There was oh the mechanical man. Yeah, I was even on it too. So I, I yeah, should know. the mechanical man was, one. Yeah. What about uh, you've talked about a few neighborhoods that you frequent? What's your favorite Detroit neighborhood? Chaldean Town. It's, I used to live there, and I loved it. It's like home to me. Okay. Then, and then when I moved there, they moved. Uh, they started another Detroit One, Coney Island, like right there on the corner on Seven Mile, and that. 
then it was like really home. So, so define that neighborhood for people who Chaldean, don't. Chaldean Town is the seven mile area between uh, Woodward and I seventy five, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- there's a lot of stuff that's just not there, or doesn't look like it's there. But there's a great Chaldean restaurant there. Um, uh, Detroit One Coney Island is there. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, there's a farm there that does that works with the uh, schools. I actually used to be part about this this farm. It's called Pingree Farms, yeah. and they bring in kids from the uh, the Detroit schools and teach them uh, animal hus- husbandry and you know farm stuff. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. If you could Home. if you could set a film anywhere in Detroit, use anything in Detroit as a backdrop, what would it be? Uh, it would. What would the film be? Or no, no, no. What would the backdrop be? What place would you? Where would the location. setting be? Location. Location scouting. Oh God! There's this really cool tunnel that I've always wanted to film in. It's. I think it's under the Fisher Theater, and it goes between the Fisher Theater uh, and another yes. building, and it's just really long and it sort of curves around and it's just. I don't know. There's. I, I remember seeing it one night, like in the middle of the night. I don't know why we were down there. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> you just come from Shane Park. <laughs> and I, it was, I just realized that it was. This was like. This was. I want to film a movie here. So that's one of the spots uh, I would love to do. Um, yeah, probably that, that. That. I don't know. It's. It's really boring. But it's that tunnel. It's just so weird feeling. I feel. That's cool. I think a lot of possibilities. Uh, do you have a favorite moment in Detroit history that you'd like to go back to and experience? Uh, yeah, it's a really personal one. Um, I So I had worked on the uh, this documentary called Motor City Rising, and I had became really good friends. I think the bar is called Bookies, mm-hmm. and it has three levels, and there's a top level on top of the roof. Yeah, the roof type. Yeah. And I had uh, my our, our show opened up at the Fillmore, I believe. I believe it, that's where we showed it, it the first episode. And that's the first time my parents came out and saw something that I worked on. Oh. And, you know, siblings too. And um, I had booked bookies, the, the rooftop of the of bookies, because it's right around the corner. And I got to have dinner on the rooftop of bookies just with my family. It was closed down for everybody else. Oh. And that was a really cool experience for me. Like, it was just like... My family finally got to see what I do because they're just yes. like, he's going to be a filmmaker? What does uh, that mean? Yeah, I know that feeling when they're like, oh, yeah. it's a real like, job. What's that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So that was a good feeling. Very nicely done. Luke Castle, thank you so much for thank coming you guys on the for show. You are absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh, again, president of the Royal Star Arts Institute and the Royal Star Film Festival, which is coming up in September, September 6th through the 15th. People can go to the website for all the details. Yeah, get your tickets now. And it's, it's Royal it. Star, S T A R R, two yep. R's, uh, dot com. Org. Dot, dot org. org. Dot org. Very dot important. Org. Oh. Very important. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, until next time, Detroit's moving. Keep up. The D. Brave. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. Hi, Craig Folly here. If you're listening to the Debrief podcast, well, I've got two things to say to you. One, you have impeccable taste. Two, you care about the community that is Metro Detroit. That's why I think you'd appreciate my daily show, The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit. Every weekday, I tackle the big issues in politics, business, arts and culture, sports. Whatever's on the mind of Detroiters and Michiganders, we will talk about it. It's all open for discussion. And keep this in mind. News doesn't have to be boring. Sure, we talk about serious stories and we have interviews and commentary, but we do it in a way that, if I'm doing my job right, is informative but also entertaining. Check out The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit for news, knowledge, hopefully some fun tossed in.